and are we done? Yes, Helen, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for moderating this innovative, <laughs> <laughs> exciting <laughs> panel discussion <laughs> on a development, <laughs> development segment. Thank you. <laughs> Would you mind if I sent that survey to you and you? I'll send it over the weekend to you and sure, you go sure. and send it to everybody. There's so yes. much information I'd love to capture, yeah? But it's right, been, yes. It's been a pleasure Absolutely. working with you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Good luck with the rest of your time. Take yeah, care. We did you. it. We absolutely yeah. got it away. <laughs> so that was Helen Child um, moderating the panel discussion on the topic of open finance, along with Serena Sebastiani, Mohammad Roshdi, and Amir Janjua. Moving on, let me start by introducing myself, if you have missed you know, that I am Prashant um, from Bangalore. I am uh, a co-organizer of API Days Dubai and Middle East. Uh, for the next session, um, it's me who is uh, presenting to you. <clears throat> the topic of mine is Journey to Open Finance and Open Data. So uh, yes, the region in focus is Dubai and Middle East, but um, uh, what I'm talking, uh, presenting to you today is about India, what um, a different approach to the open data and open finance that uh, India is taking. And um, uh, it's a quite a radically different approach than what you have seen, uh, that you have heard today, everything. <clears throat> uh, India Stack, I'm sure you all would have heard this name at some point or the other in context of the, uh, the global digital public goods um, uh, concept. Uh, India stack comprises of a um, plethora of um, digital public goods uh, built by the India government or the organizations associated with India government or else the organizations uh, or the public private partnership model. <clears throat> this essentially uh, focuses on three areas cashless layer, paperless layer, and a presenceless layer. By cashless layer, the aim was to reduce the dependency on the physical currency and move to a uh, electronic payment or a digital payment interfaces. A paperless layer wanted to reduce the usage of paper in terms of you know, uh, the applications to submit, the uh, documents to be signed, the uh, address proofs to be submitted, the KYC documents to be submitted, everything. And the presenceless layer, where you don't need to be essentially present, but yes, you can use your one of your uh, either um, uh, identities, one of the other digital public goods to in order to uh, validate your presence. <clears throat> So, um, as you can see in the cashless layer, uh, the flag bearer of India is the Unified Payment Interface, UPI, uh, which is the, the fastest growing real-time payment platform anywhere in the world and um, is being um, you know, uh, adopted by many countries. Even in the Middle East region, UPI payment in Indian rupees is possible in some, uh, some, some of the areas. And um, UPI is... Um, has a seamless integration with uh, the payment system, payment network in the, uh, say, Singapore. <clears throat> so these three layers were there. They, they, they brought, they came into existence from uh, post-2005 onwards uh, on a gradual model. And then these brought in a huge amount of change in terms of digital adoption, a digital transformation in the way you, uh, way the um, people interact. Uh, as much as even to go and buy a, uh, two uh, five cents uh, a biscuit packet, a small biscuit packet, or a tea, uh, which costs roughly say ten cents. Uh, you you can use a mobile uh, app, use a UPI payment app, and do the payment. You don't need to know <clears throat> the, the the minimum amount is not even there is no minimum amount condition to uh, co comply with, right? But did this. Did it solve uh, all the problems? No, it didn't solve all the problems. There are some problems which were uh, still um, uh, unaddressed, left unaddressed, right? So one is, so these are some of the problems um, that still a section of the um, society faced or are facing. So like paper-based processes, 
the economy still uh, quite a lot of it is informal even after all this digital progress uh, the lack of touch points i mean lack of access to say a bank or a bank uh, uh, bank representative and then high interest rate partly because the bank doesn't know you balance sheet or asset based lending only if uh, I, I as a person prashant as an individual can go and show my property i might be able to uh, proof of my property i might be able to get a loan or else for my uh, business i need a, a <clears throat> to get the money i need to have all the details of the cash flows that i am having and then for that i will require a huge amount of you know print outs for say past 12 months of um uh, uh, transactions right and uh, of course the heavy dependency on the physical currency uh, and the lack of uh, credit history because a lot of uh, the de dependency on the physical currency and this informal nature of the economy leads to a non existence or a low cr credit history <clears throat> so part of these problems in some way or the other uh, needed to be addressed and how is it the common factor among these all of the to address all these problems is the data how to make the data av make available for everybody <clears throat> right so i uh, as an individual has a say 20 years of banking transactions banking history with one bank and then um, bank a and then i i'm going to bank b for a loan for maybe bank b is offering a better rates or bank a i'm still continuing because my salary is coming there but i don't want to really continue to with the bank a and i want to go to the bank b so uh, i'm or say i'm taking a mortgage and bank b requires a plethora of documents hard copies signed everything right so <laughs> two years ago um, uh, reserve bank of india that is the um, banking authority in india um, sorry that four years ago banking authority of india the uh, organized a working group to um, bring up a you know consented data transfer model in india a real time transfer model and the output is the data empowerment and protection architecture and this enables a consented secure transfer of the data to any party to whom i give uh, i give consent to right <clears throat> so it essentially brings in three sets of uh, parties or rather four i as an user i or an sme it can be to financial information providers say in this case the bank a with whom i have been i have the banking uh, history for the past 20 years and my salary is, or income is coming there so for the years to come financial information user the bank b from whom i am now taking the mortgage and an account aggregator a new set of entities who will facilitate the secure data transfer <clears throat> and it's all data is encrypted data access is provided in a consented manner and time bound me method as in say <clears throat> i am taking the mortgage for say 10 years right and to release the uh, to uh, in process the mortgage bank b will require details of um, how much uh, salary what salary uh, i have been or what is the income of mine every month for the past one year say right so they need the data of so last one year of uh, my bank right bank details right and then in order to ensure that my a mortgage account is not turning into a non performing asset and to take any proactive measures they will need to provide a do a continuous monitoring so that can be enabled if they have access to my account data in some form or the other say for the next 10 years or say for the first 5 years of my mortgage tenure this uh, data empowerment and protection architecture enables me to provide the consent for a particular duration of time so for one time i can give access to my past one year data and for a continuous basis for a five years i can give them access to um, bank b the access to my bank account to the extent of ensuring that i am remaining solvent <clears throat> right so this uh whole account account aggregator ecosystem was brought into place not just uh, no not just like that they have put there enough thoughts enough uh, 
um, you know, um, up, take, care has been taken into ensure that the different aspects of the different nuances of this uh, ecosystem is um, you know, covered as part of this full set of regulations. So, right, the um, RBI, the banking authorities' directives are the master directions are there. Then, banking authority itself has a IT subsidiary who has built the API specifications to be followed for this. Then there are organizations, self-regulatory organizations, um, uh, and the, <clears throat> the member organizations like the account aggregators who will do the advocacy, who will ensure the awareness. Then there are central registries of um, different participants, their approvals, the, the keys, to be, uh, keys to be used for API verification. Then the security aspects, API token or a digital signatures, and the certification to ensure that the systems being used by the banks, any financial information user or a financial information provider or an account aggregator is up to the standards are, um, are safe and secure. <clears throat> then the integration standards, then <clears throat> the participation terms under which they, the, the general agreement between the different parties, then the how the dispute gets res resolved and the dashboard uh, at a entity level uh, or I'll say aggregate level on how the uh, account aggregate ecosystem is performing. Then uh, what is the minimum guidelines or guidance on the customer experience? What are the minimum fields that these different stakeholders need to ensure that a customer is aware of what he or she is doing then the basic um, you know, checklist on to ensure that they all adhere to a common code of conduct. Then the, how the account aggregators or any other party gets compensated <coughs> for their performing their duties. Then, the, the, then a um, ever evolving um, um, framework to uh, bring in more stakeholders to this um, ecosystem. To start with, this ecosystem started with only the banking uh, regulator, and then it moved on to the insurance regulator, <clears throat> right? And then uh, in 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 a, in the next couple of months, the stock my stock holdings uh, shareholdings will be also part of this, right? And then the uh, GST or the goods and service tax uh, details will can be made. So if I, if I'm an SME, am I? Uh, GST compliance, GST payment, how much tax I'm paying, every, all the details will be made available as part of this network. <clears throat> right. And <clears throat> definitely the uh, privacy technologies in, in to ensure that the data uh, is completely secure, data is masked, uh, wherever required, everything. Right. And then, so this is a glimpse um, of the account aggregate ecosystem um, right now. So here you can see uh, how much of you know, the different set of entities that uh, are, be, are, are joining this ecosystem, like the banks, uh, the insurance companies, these non-banking financial companies, the retirement investment advisors, the uh, fintechs, <clears throat> and then the uh, organizations which are providing the technical know-how and capability, <clears throat> and then the API infrastructure services providers, uh, there are um, payment platforms like the Google Pay who, who leverages the uh, UPI infrastructure for the making the payment. <clears throat> so essentially what it did to the India stack, the, this account aggregated ecosystem on the data empowerment and protection architecture brought in a consent layer to the India stack, which ensured that a secure, data sharing framework is established and a methodology is established. And it started with the financial services sector. But is it only restricted to financial services sector? No, that's definitely a no, <clears throat> right? So some of the current use cases which are being adopted and are being experimented are, so omni-channel, omni-product, loan origination, a continuous account monitoring, a data-driven PFM. So the uh, PFM services in general in India are provided um, by the fintechs and fintechs currently are not part of the uh, entities uh, who have the authorization to be formally part of this account aggregator ecosystem, but they do still part, they do still play a part via the banks with which they have the tie up, right? 
and this the future scope it that's an unlimited one right it uh, at the end of day uh, any data any sort of data is being securely shared uh, with consent so it can be an education certificate you are moving jobs you are moving from uh, you're, you're joining a new education institution for a new course and they want to have uh, your past uh, qualifications uh, past courses that you have done or you have you achieved 10 credits you are moving into another university for another 10 credits and uh, yes you can uh, transfer your proof of you know the, the 10 credits that you have in this secure manner and then similarly with the health records you are sharing it with from one hospital's records and with another hospital in a secure manner. And the, the, the another option that could be in the, that in the being discussed is an instant sort of a credit scoring. If if a, if I can provide my say last five years of banking, all sorts of financial services data like bank or a stock holding or everything, I can uh, uh, the modern big data driven algorithms can even do an instant credit scoring and uh, you no know, uh, provide me a loan. Even if I have no credit history, even if I was not part of, um, no, uh, a, a not any formal sort of a credit scoring system, right? <clears throat> now, so just uh, sum summarizing at a high level, the uh, benefits to different set of stakeholders, right? So for financial institutions, it it, it brings in a no lower cost of acquisition. Uh, they can process the loan. Uh, the, the, uh, they can do their processing faster. And they can avoid with the um, uh, intermediaries uh, and the commission thereby. And they can um, bring in innovation and bring in uh, new value-added services and offerings to the <coughs> uh, customers. And then can be looked at uh, you know, adjacencies or leveraging it for in, uh, using other uh, set of similar data points from the other industries. Right? Then from an individual perspective, I don't have to take a tons of printouts put in tens of signatures. Uh, I just uh, tra can transfer these data securely. So no paper, then uh, faster processing. Uh, I don't need to go behind a uh, agent to get my document submitted. Rather, it gets submitted uh, electronically faster. And then, of course, I'm going to be, um, I'm sure, look looking forward to you know, better financial products because the bank has different access to far more data than they normally would have or that normally they could process if they uh, we were still sticking with the paper-based processes. Uh, and of course, this granular level of data enables the banks to price the product accordingly. A lower interest rate could always uh, benefit the customer. <clears throat> Similarly, for the uh, SME customers, right? Uh, it can uh, lead to a uh, cash flow based lending. So uh, there are uh, in, in post the COVID uh, uh, lockdown started, the we, we across the globe, the organizations have uh, there are a couple of a large number of smaller organizations that come into play, uh, providing you know <clears throat> digital uh, selling products online. So this is the perfect example where a cash flow based lending can be applied. Uh, and you know, a daily deduction based on the cash flow and the uh, loan they have taken, right? <clears throat> and they can get a better credit history or a faster credit history established. And of course, uh, availing the uh, support from the government schemes will make it a you know, easier avenue for availing those services. Yeah. So uh, key takeaways. Uh, in in a lot of uh, the previous sessions, you would have heard, right, <laughs> that um, a uh, market-driven approach or a regulator-driven approach, which is better. So uh, as I said in the outset of this uh, session, this uh, all this de uh, uh, <clears throat> data empowerment protection architecture and the account aggregator ecosystem uh, were brought into place by the regulator. But this is not mandatory on any organization. This is on the basis of a reciprocity. So I'm just going back to the example of my bank A, bank B. So if bank A were a part of the account aggregator ecosystem and um, bank A is willing to share it electronically and bank B is not ready to accept in this manner, I am definitely, even if the interest rate is far lower, I might even choose to look for a bank C or a bank D, right? Because now I 
once I get to know how good it is, how better it is to, for me as an individual and as a customer to use this service, I would rather stick to that, right? <clears throat> so it is not regulated. It is initiated by regulator, but it is not mandated by regulator. It is more from a compliance. Uh, it is uh, from a reciprocity basis and not compliance driven, right? And open data journey. Uh, India never had a... A proper open banking journey, but Indian banks are at the forefront of adoption of APIs. And, you know, in fact, uh, the, one of the initial success stories across the globe on the <coughs> corporate payments, uh, AP, AP adoption in corporate payments is from India. So we just skip that uh, one step, open banking uh, step itself, or rather an open finance step itself. And we are directly moving into an open data journey. It's that the awareness is lower, um, it's, the, it's that <clears throat> since the push from the government is not there and it, the adoption of it is a little lower, right? <clears throat> then it is inclusive of the bottom of the pyramid. Um, as you are all aware, India is one of the, you know, uh, in terms of digital adoption, one of the fastest growing countries. And in terms of, uh, you know, having access to smartphones, uh, India is, you know, has a fairly good, growth rate right so um, and connecting back to the um, okay, uh, example i cited of making a payment of a t that is less than 10 cents or less than that or around that uh, via a, uh, a digital payment right <clears throat> so this is this type of um, account aggregator ecosystem and the account aggregator uh, mobile apps will enable the people at that bottom of the pyramid to have access to the formal credit, to have, have um, the ability to transfer their data in a secure manner, right? Mm -hmm. And then this is an integral part of the India stack. And there are a lot many other components which are work in progress um, across different other sectors. Um, it, th there is one on the educational side. There is one on the na healthcare side. So all these are um, <clears throat> integrated and you know um, have uh, a seamless working model so this will all ensure that the digital transformation in india is in a comprehensive manner and not just limited to a um, banking or a finance sector or any particular sectors at all rather it is comprehensive it is well integrated and it has those <clears throat> adjacency effect which will um, ensure that the growth rate is not uh, no, uh, rather just a simple addition it is via a exponential way i'll just check if there are any questions okay i'm good so thanks a lot thanks a lot for uh, for being here with me and um, listening to my session thank you